today we'll be covering pages 268 and 269 in our textbook and you want to have your calculator. Lesson 3, graphs and zeros of polynomials. A polynomial function consisting of terms that are all have whole number powers. In its most general form, a polynomial can be written as y equals a sub n times x to the n plus a sub n minus 1 times x to the n minus 1 plus all the way down to a sub 0. So a sub n here is simply the coefficient, that's all. Simply represents a number, a real number, it's a coefficient. And our exponents, they all have to be whole numbers, right? Your whole numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And a sub 0 here would represent the constant. For example, y equals 3x to the 5th minus 2x to the 4th, that's a polynomial. Function y equals x to the seventh plus ten. That's a polynomial function. Y equals three x to the negative two is not a polynomial function. Our exponents have to be whole numbers. Quadratic and linear functions are the simplest of all polynomials. In this lesson, we'll look at exploring cubic and quartic functions, those who have highest powers of um, 3 and 4, so x to the 3rd and x to the 4th terms, respectively. For each of the following cubic functions, sketch the graph and circle its x-intercepts. So for a, we have y equals x to the third minus 3x squared minus 6x plus 8. Go to y equals on your calculator. I've already keyed it in. Actually, I keyed in all three of them just to save time on the video. And it is highlighted. We do have to change the window. So let's go to window once you key in 1a. And we want to go from negative 5, negative 5, to positive 5 for our x, arrow down to y min, uh, negative 20, to positive 20 for our max. And now graph. Now looking at this equation, um, 8 is going to be the y-intercept. If we replace, put in zeros for our x's, we end up with 8. y equals 8 is our y-intercept. So I'm just going to mark that. It's a different color. And we know that our graph passes through. So that looks like that's 2. Try this a little better. Remember, these have to be of equal length, so just please try to estimate. All right, so we have, it's definitely, leading coefficient is, is positive, so we know it is going to rise right. And looking at the graph, we have something like this. So we have one, two, three zeros. And 
and we have one, two turning points. So I'm going to say TP for a turning point. And we have three zeros, negative two, one, and four. B, go back to y equals p in 2x cubed minus 8x plus 9. I already have it in. I'm just going to turn on the equals and it will graph that for me. Keep in, in mind it is cubic, so it is, and the leading coefficient is positive. So it is going to rise right again. In fact, all of these are going to rise right. But let's look at the graph. Y-intercept is 9. We see here it crosses the x-axis at um, between, one, two, between negative 2 and negative 3. These are sketches. We have one zero and two turning points. And now the last one We see that the y-intercept is zero, and it bounces off the x-axis. This is important. At this point right here, at an x value of three, it's bouncing off the x-axis. That's a turning point, and here's a turning point. It is tangent to the x-axis at this turning point, and we also think of it as bouncing off the x-axis. an x value of 3, it means there are actually two roots there. Two zeros there. Okay. Here. Or I should say, let's see, it means that x minus 3 is going to be a double root. So let's do this. Let's take this and let's replace y with 0 and let's solve this. Right. Uh, take out the 2x as a GCF and we have x squared minus 6x plus 9 and then factoring the trinomial, the factors of 9 that sum to negative 6 are negative 3 and negative 3, and we write that as x minus 3 times x minus 3, or x minus 3 squared. Now 
the same thing here. Um, this we cannot factor, but this one we could have, right? We could do grouping here, I believe. If I take out x squared out of the first two, with x minus 3, and taking out a negative 2. Nope, oh, sorry, we can't factor that. All right, at least we didn't get too far into it. All right, so this is not factorable. This is not, um, but this was. So a cubic may have one, two, or three real roots and can have two turning points. There's a connection between the cubic function's factors and its x-intercepts. Consider the cubic function uh, whose equation is y equals x cubed minus x squared minus 12x. Algebraically determine the zeros. So we replace y with zero. Zero equals x cubed minus x squared minus 12x. Take out the GCF and factor the trinomial inside parentheses. The factors of negative 12 that sum to negative 1, negative 4, and 3. So we have our factors x, x minus 4, x plus 3. Set each factor equal to 0. And solving individually, Now sketching the graph, since these are zeros, zero, positive four, and negative three, that's where our, our graph will intersect our x-axis. Let's go to the calculator if we need to. Um, leading coefficient is positive, so we know it's going to rise, right? And it's going to pass, pass this. So it's going to be something like this, but an actual graph of it. Looking at it in the calculator will help us, but this gives us a general idea. going to y equals key in I'm just the window um, from negative 7 to positive 7 and negative 25 to positive 25 You have to be able to do this on your own, right? Looking at the graph. So we checked it with the calculator. That looks good. Basically what's happening here, if these are zeros, that's not what I wanted, all right? Um, negative three is a zero. So X plus three is a factor. 0 is a 0, so x is a factor. And 4 is a 0, so x minus 4 is a factor. That's the relationship. Number 3, the largest root of x cubed minus 9x squared plus 12x plus 22 equals 0 falls between what two consecutive integers? Use that calculator. We're not going to, in fact, we cannot solve that by factoring. So go to the y equals in the calculator, key in our terms. Okay, I believe I have it incorrectly. I'm just going to leave the window as it was. Look at the graph. We know that the y-intercept is actually 22. OK, 
give and we want the larger the largest root is between what two consecutive integers uh, here and here and this went out to seven from our last problem so that's between six and seven between six and seven Again, if you have the uh, from, from negative 10 to positive 10, if you did a zoom 6 and went back to the standard window, between 6 and 7. Consider the quartic function. y equals x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus 4. Algebraically determine the x-intercepts. X-intercepts are the same as zeros. They're also known as zeros. So replace Y with zero. Trinomial, the factors of four that sum to five or, or sum to negative five or negative four and negative one. Because it's X to the fourth, our binomials go X squared minus 4 times x squared minus 1 equals 0. Set each factor equal to 0. Or you could continue to factor. These are both the difference of perfect squares. It's up to you. If I say x squared minus 4 equals 0, add 4. Square root x equals plus or minus 2. If I choose to factor this further, x plus 1 times x minus 1, and then set each equal to 0, we get x equals negative 1 and x equals positive 1. Verify your answer to part A by sketching the graph. Okay, so if these are zeros, positive 1, negative 1, a positive 2 and negative 2. The degree here is even, it's 4, um, and the leading coefficient is positive, so we know this is the tails are going to point in the same direction because of even, and they'll both be pointing upward because of the leading coefficient of positive. I change the window to match this here. X is from negative 5 to positive 5 and Y from negative 5 to positive 10. Again, please, you have to be doing this with me. Don't just watch me do all the work on my calculator. You need to be doing the same on your own calculator. The Y-intercept is 4. is about here. There's five. There's about four there. Alright, so this is what it looks like. Again, I can't stress enough. If negative two, right, negative two is a zero, so these are our zeros in green. Negative 2, negative 1, 1, and 2. Then that means that our factors are x plus 2, x plus 1, x minus 1, and x minus 2. And their last problem, consider the quartic whose equation is Sketch a graph of this quartic on the axis below. Label its x-intercepts. Okay. Yes, we cannot factor that as it is.
change the window. Y intercept is 70. So this is 7. Negative 7, sorry. 2, 1, and 5. this again. Our zeros, or x-intercepts, are negative 7, negative 2, 1, and 5. So based on our graph, write the expression in its factored form. So if these are the zeros, then the factors are going to be x plus 7, x plus 2, x minus 1, and x minus 5. And I can go to y equals and put those four factors in into y2. And press graph. And there the red graph is coinciding with the blue graph, so they are equivalent.